how well the matchup is played here. Yeah, Gem Gems are definitely uh, formidable, and skilled in taking advantage of like the things that make Meta, uh, excuse me, Mega Man, Mega Man. Like he's just really good at doing a lot of Mega Man things by spacing back airs, uh, you know, abusing pellets. Uh, if, but if Solcer's familiar with how to deal with it, uh, I'm interested to see what Jam will, will present uh, as a mix-up to you know the obvious gameplay. And Solcer doing a great job right now, just kind of keeping in. So far, it's really been a matter of uh, Solcer taking advantage of the fact that Mega Man is heavy. Oh, there's a jab lock. Oh, up smash punish. I'm surprised why. Well, with no Metal Blade in hand, Jam Jumbo wasn't really going to be able to get too much out of that lock. Although, I feel like he should have gone for um, for Down Smash. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, I know Down Smash has more knockback. I'm not sure if it also does more damage, but uh, either way, the up smash was still, you know, a punish, nevertheless. Yes. All right, has a glitch. And this is a very scary part for Diddy Kong is in recovery because that back air is really good at snuffing out any kind of a horizontal recovery he opts for. And then of course you have the uh, hard knuckle there for uh, vertical recoveries. But that down tilt to up smash is going to be the stock Solcer taking uh, the first one of the game. And we even saw some pretty dramatic DI from Jam Jumbo, but it just wasn't enough to take him out. Yeah, Solcer knows his percents. Plus on Town and City, and the up smash was completely fresh, if I recall correctly. Those are playing the matchup very well. He's just making sure to go for just bursty options. Rack up the damage, reset the neutral. That way he doesn't have to worry about Jam Jumma suddenly reversing the situation on him. Indeed, but poor spacing on that backer is going to forfeit him stage control, but Jam Jumma throwing out the up tilt, trying to get an early stock. Well, I mean, not too early, but uh, trying to just close it out, I guess. That up air was threatening for kill. Considering the percentage uh, that we have, Right now, Diddy Kong with Rage is not a laughing matter on those platforms. Especially not on Town and City. Jam Jumbo once again with the banana, however, it returns to Solcer's control. Ooh, no follow up there. I don't think he thought the banana was going to land. Or, you know, on hit. All right. Ooh, I like what Jam Jumbo is trying to go for, but it was just too little too late. Using the Leaf Shields to try and get the Gimp out of the, uh, the Rocket Barrels would have been nice, especially along that lower edge of Town and City, but it's not that fast of a startup on the projectile. And once again, we'll see that clank with the uh, monkey flip kick and the hard knuckle. Uh, that move seems to clank with a lot of things. I know it clanks with Fox's Firefox, <laughs> funny enough, or at least on the ascent of the Firefox. Yeah. And probably a few other things that I'm not too aware of. It doesn't help that uh, Hard Knuckle doesn't have that great of priority, and Monkey Flip is just deceptively safe. How much damage does the, the Hard Knuckle do? I think it does. I know priority is typically based on damage. Uh, it's not like its own uh, you know, category, besides for things like Transcendent Priority. I think it only does 8%. I would have to double check that. That would make sense. Uh, but it's only really notable because it's a projectile that just spikes downwards. It's also dropping the backer follow-up, but it finds a frame trap with the Monkey Flip. I like that. And Jumbo just going for some safe, consistent combos, trying to bring these percentages back in his favor. Okay, uh, but Jam not fast falling after the second footstool. Ooh, all right. I see Solcer's doing a great job of using uh, Diddy Kong's forward air to beat out pellets and just find, find his way in in every situation where Jam is trying to keep him out. Jam now keeping him in the juggle situation. A lot of stage control, almost finding that confirm into the back air. Uh, now Solcer back in advantage. Yeah, a bit of an input flub, uh, not getting the grab for Jam Jam and gave Solcer all the space that he needed to reset this into his fight. I'll tell you one thing about Jam, as you can tell, even just thus far from this set, he loves going for his up tilts. He's never afraid to throw that out. Very punishable move, but I mean, chances are you're getting a stock if you landed on hit with a strong hit. So, Jam Jam, okay, grabbed him. I don't think he landed, so he, he's not gonna have a, no, he did land, I guess. I, it depends on the throw animation, I think, if they touch the ground. Or maybe he had his jump the whole time, but I didn't think he did. Oh, I'm not sure if he meant to do that dash attack. Smart air dodge from Solcer and not having any of that back air. Now that was a situation where I feel like the Leaf Shields would have been a much better option than just going in. However, he reverses the situation with the Spark Needles and Jam Jumbo stays with this first stock at 140%. Solcer could just go in with an up tilt or try to get a banana confirm and end this stock, but he's going to have to do it quickly. Yeah, see, Jam should really be thinking here. This is where he wants to play keep away. He doesn't want to go for anything too big. Uh, and he doesn't want to approach, which he's doing right now, but so far he's, you know, succeeding in it, so I guess I can't blame him. There is, oh, there's the footstool, has his jump, oh, goes oh, for the second footstool. It. Oh, it all went wrong. 
It all yeah. went wrong. Even you could see in the player cam, Jam Jam was shaking his head heavily over that. He was really close to getting that second footstool, which almost definitely would have been a stock. In fact, I'd have to see it back, but he may have indeed footstooled him, but out of the up E startup animation, which would uh, give him the footstool, you know, ascent from the jump, but not actually affected Solstar in any way. All right, Metal Blade in hand. We don't see Jam Jam throwing it just yet, but there he goes. And oh, another time Solstar being a little unsafe on Jam's shield, and he's going to capitalize completely. All right, so now we're... Yeah, that was funny as hell. Yeah, that was actually great what happened over there. There were so many little hits interacting in that final situation. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those situations, I think, where you're confident that your pressure is affecting your opponent, like, both mentally and in the game, and you don't realize that they still have options. <laughs> that looked untechable, as a matter of fact. Yeah, uh, it was a rather weird interaction. All right, going to Battlefield for game three. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, to be honest, I don't understand how Battlefield really affects these characters, so I'm not going to speak anything either way to, on the matter, but Solster clearly thinks that it's uh, good for Diddy in this. I could see it helping him land and helping him avoid the walls of the pellets because he has the platforms where he can have just different heights to, uh, you know, have his shield up. If this is going to be assisting Solcer, it's going to have to figure uh, figure a way into his game plan as far as combos go and defensive movement because Battlefield is a fantastic stage for Mega Man. He's able to use the air shooters to a lot of pressure. defend the base platform incredibly well. They juggle fantastically. If Jam Jam is able to follow DI, he can get upwards of like six to eight air shooters connecting in a row, possibly threatening for a kill off the top blast zone. And on top of that, the larger blast zones allow Mega Man to survive a long time. Yeah, and I believe Mega Man is the heavier of the two characters. Yep. I, I know Diddy is a, a pretty, I believe he's a midweight. I think Mega Man might be considered actually heavy, but he is. either Mega way, Man's a robot, yeah. and he's heavy as hell. Yeah. Also, uh, I don't really like getting back aired on landing on platforms. So I don't know why it's also a picture. Yeah, like that's what I'm thinking. I, I've this always thought this was considered one of Diddy's worst stages in general. And this is. This is like up for grabs as being one of Mega Man's best because all of his tools work so well for defending the stage and threatening the offstage space, which is just a situation Mega Man always wants to be in. Could be a preferential kind of thing, you know? Sometimes that happens. But either way, we do find ourselves at the end of the stock and uh, both players at a definite kill percent. Um, oh, an up smash through the platform, gonna take the stock. Figured it out. Solster was like, you beat me on my best stage, and I'm going to beat you on your best stage. And we'll see who's really the better player. It's a pride thing. All right, Jam Jumbo uh, probably getting some missed inputs there, trying to do something off stage, but just grab the ledge into the get-up attack. Uh, I'm sure we've all experienced that kind of feeling when the ledge gets in the way of our off stage intentions. Oh, OK. I, yeah, he, did he want the spike uh, monkey flip there, or whatever you call it? I think that's what he went for. The hop off? Yeah, where you like jump off, and the other person just falls down. Something I haven't seen uh, Jam Jumba do, which I'm definitely going to tell him to start doing, the Z Drop Metal Blade Absolutely. Yeah. at the ledge is actually really critical in this matchup. It, it covers so much vertical space, and Diddy Kong is forced to respect it and just recover in a massive arc because it could clip into the uh, the rocket barrels at any point. I believe it can also frame trap. Uh, if like they're in an air dodge position, you can frame trap to a back air, and then the back air re grabs the Metal Blade anyway. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the banana snipe! but still has time to charge his up long enough to make it back to stage. Uh, okay, uh, so start either trying to go for a ledge cancel or maybe a miss input. Oh, he's gonna have to re-grab here, or wasn't it? Uh, oh, yeah. Yo, almost had it, but it was just too deep. I felt like he had more time to charge it. He actually probably would've been able to make it. Yeah, uh, you're the king of doing that in Delver, so I will take your word for it. So now sitting at 97%, Jam Jumbo's got to play this carefully. Soul Surge is constantly threatening space with that forward air, trying to move in on the ground with the banana. But evasive movement from Jam Jumbo is going to be pivotal to him, at least trying to extend the stock to the point where he can make use of this rage. Because sitting at this particular threshold, <laughs> it's just not enough yet for him to be dangerous. That was an interesting combo break with the uh, puppy from Diddy Kong there. I've never quite seen it used in that way. There's a few Diddy Kongs who have been developing like anti-Mega Man tech specifically. Ooh, I think Jam went for an up tilt there. At these percentages, I don't know if he would have gotten it, but I don't agree with this use of the, uh, the hard knuckle. I feel like he'd be much better off threatening off stage with Nair. The hitbox at the base of the Mega Buster would definitely be enough knockback to set up a ledge situation heavily into his favor. So I think the winner of this at this point is going to, well, I mean, obviously there's a significant percent differential, but I feel like both of the players, oh my gosh, and he's dead from it. Yo, we even I hear the ball. I can't believe with that ball. 
I see. I was about to comment on how both players were choosing like a lot of aggressive committal options and not kind of waiting for their hits to come to them. Well, it turns out the game just ended that way. Yep. So. Yeah. So uh, Sosa was really hungry, and Jam yeah. was like, "Yo, eat this fist, though." <laughs> Yeah, and as I said before, Jam never afraid to throw out, you know, an option, especially up tilt, uh, in situations like that. Let's see exactly. Oh, this is the situation. Okay. Yeah, that's where it just flops. Yeah. If he just kept going for up smash, and it's like, yo, dude, you don't need to do this. Just throw him off the stage yeah. and use stage control. And then boop. <laughs> That was some suspect DI, too. He was oh, lingering was a bit. Good. No, he went to the right. He, he went, went to the so, right, yeah, yeah, but he was lingering a bit. Nonetheless, it could have been just the percentages at play. Yeah. It was just over yeah. at that point. <laughs> it was a yeah. pretty entertaining set, to say the least. Um, Yo, oh, and, looks uh, like we got Black Sheep popping on. All right. Yeah, Jam Jumbo with a nice counter pick, the nice color <laughs> counter pick. He started as Bumblebee Mega Man, and he went to Delicious. Oh, right, you guys uh, are the goat for keeping track of the colors. I would never do. And and Tim's sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what's, a, what's a Tim? Yeah, we don't, I, I, we don't know what those I are. I don't know.